welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside more guides before tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out, all their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today I'm playing Popper at the request of Patreon subscriber James, who has sent me in with Boros Synthesizer. This is a deck that I think is super cool and has been near the top of the Popper metagame for many years in various forms. The idea of which is to play permanents that gain value when they come into play, like Experimental Synthesizer. You flip your top card, you can play it this turn when it enters or leaves the battlefield. Raven Inspector makes a clue. Limbus. Scries one and draws a card. Wedding Invitation draws a card. These things all do something when they come into play. And then you have overstatted creatures to pick them up and do it again. Glint Hawk, 2-2 two, two flying when it enters the battlefield. You bounce an artifact you control or sacrifice this. Or Skyfisher enters the battlefield, return a permanent you control to its owner's hand. Two mana, 2-3 two, flyer. And you just draw cards and gain advantage while adding to your flying air force. And then... You also just have a zillion points of burn to close it out at the end. Boros is probably my least favorite color combination in Magic, just for what those colors do and how Boros decks tend to work. This is not that. This plays like a Demir control deck in all of the ways that I really enjoy, except you also get to lightning bolt people's faces at the end of the game. I'm excited about it. I haven't played this deck in a very long time. Stoked to get back in. This is Boros Synthesizer, one of the top decks in Popper. Let's get after it. 3 for 1 Trading is having a spring sale from April 10th to 15th. Their whole inventory is 5% off, and they offer free worldwide shipping on all orders over $500 or euros. Check out their vast selection of eternal staples, high-end foils, and sealed product. Use code SPRINGSALE24 to enjoy free, fully insured worldwide shipping and 5% off your order. Excluded from the sale is Outlaws of Thunder Junction, non-MTG sealed product, other sale items, and gaming supplies. Scan the QR code or find them at shop.341trading.com. On the draw in round one with a no lander, there are 20 lands in this deck. Okay, this hand, I'm going to keep it. It's a little risky in that it doesn't have an engine, but it is set up with its mana, and if I find an engine, I'm good. I'm unlikely to die quickly because I have a bunch of removal, and it looks like we're in... Some type of mirror match. Rustvale Bridge can be in Jeskai Ephemerate, or there's also multiple flavors of Boros. We'll see what's actually going on. Ancient Den. Okay, looks like it is the actual mirror match, for which I am on the draw and down a card. I guess because I'm on the draw, we're actually equal on cards. I don't really want to bolt this thing, but it is going to hurt me a lot over time if I don't. I guess I could have just played Ginger Brew to block. I got high hopes for that, though. Just Ginger Brute, pick up uh, all the glitters, and bash. Or Sky Fisher. They're going to pick up their Barbed Batter Fist, which is why I wasn't excited about killing that, because it's just going to come right back. Novice Inspector. Okay. I need a Boro Synthesizer, or whatever the card's called. Experimental Synthesizer. Oof. I mean, I could kill their creatures, but I don't even know if that's good. I mean, stick the Ginger Brute and go to town here. Can't block. Getting my points. I'm not going to Gal Blast both of these creatures. I have one Blast up if they do have an All That Glitters. But got to win the game somehow. They're just in for three. I do have eight points of burn in my hand. And if they're not gassing up their creatures with powerful auras and stuff, I'm not inclined to use creature removal. If I could go face later. And their board is just so much better than mine. I might have to kill one of these Skyfishers. Our batter fist is back. I'm going to blast a Skyfisher in the end step. Come on, Synthesizer or Lemba something. Oh, oh, okay. Well, now we flip it right away. The race is on. This is bigger than Galvanic Blast. And I still have a blast up of my own. This is the cheese I was hoping for. All the glitters. Roast that in response. Hope that's good enough, because that's all I got. F6 from here. Don't have another one. Okay, they're in for four. Nope, leaving back a blocker. 
And it's not going to be able to block, but that does tax my mana, I guess. Okay, this draws a card and makes my brute bigger. There are also other words on this card. Target creature can't be blocked this turn if it's a vampire gains lifelink. Well, it's not one of those. Drew an artifact land. And they are suddenly dead on board next turn. They got to figure this out. They have five artifacts if they have another all its glitters. They didn't bolt me in the end step. They're not racing for the, the win here. There's probably sequences of cards here that kill me, but I'm just going to hope they don't have them. Wedding invitation. Okay. Yeah, can't be blocked. It's not can't attack or block. It just... Okay. Uh, we were behind that whole game, and then I entered cheese mode before they did. I'll take it. A journey to nowhere kills big creatures. And here we are with this nonsense. Dusted us, exile two artifacts, rip up their lands, revoke existence, exile target artifact enchantment, rip up their lands. Destroy evil lines up well against specifically all that glitters and not really against the other stuff. Dawnbringer Cleric, destroy target enchantment. That might be good. Makeshift munitions, I could see an argument for. Uh, but I'm going to prioritize these four and then these two, and then we'll see what's left. I'm not super familiar with this deck. I'm making this up as I go along. I would probably think the engines are very important. I would probably think that generic 3-1 creature can be played without at least not without the full boat of them. Lightning Bolt is very good. I could shave one of the Ginger Brutes. Because I am bringing in a bunch of removal. Like, I could turn Lightning Bolt into Journey to Nowhere, and that's an upgrade. A Dawnbringer Cleric can gain life or kill all that glitters is. I'm considering all of these uh, Inspectors as engines as well. And then the Glint Hawks and the Sky Fishers are the engine enablers. So I basically consider these 23 cards essential in this mirror match. There's probably matchups where we cut some of the inspectors, but it's not this one. I'm going to go revoke existence over another lightning bolt, and I will try it like this. And they're going to be sideboarding in basically all the same cards I am, which means I was going to say I would prioritize basic lands and not artifact lands, but here we are with Rustvale Bridge tapped as my only play. I'm going to try this. It's risky, but I do have a synthesizer that if it flips a land, we're cooking. I could even just Glint Hawk onto, pick up my bridge, play it again. I have two natural draw steps before I miss a land drop. And if I just draw like a mountain or plains, this hand is fine. They've got the crag. This is not an artifact. Mine is. If they revoke my existence right now, that card would be named perfectly. Synthesizer. All right, they're taking a blind flip here. And they hit Glint Hawk. Please don't have a white source. Oh, the nuts. All right. Well, they're right back in this. Okay. Great start to this game for them. And they exiled and all that glitters. They won't be able to play that one. It burns off at the end of turn. Monland. Or Sky Fisher. Okay. Synthesizer. Try to hit a land is my play here. I might just lose the game right now. Hey, we're in there. Or I could match their perfect start with my own. Always at it. I could return it. Ancient Den and play around Dust to Dust so all my lands don't get obliterated. I am actually going to do that. Okay, played around it. I will continue to play the game. They flipped another Ancient Den that I cannot play this turn because you don't get to play lands on your bonus turn most of the time. Those are the rules of magic. Red Source would be pretty good. My own Dust to Dust and no real plan here. Yeah, being on the draw and having my hand work out the way that it did, double beats. Opponents playing around dust to dust on their own lands with the, the non-artifacts. All that glitter is okay. Wish this was a red source. Multiple answers ready to go, except not really. Bolting my friend. If I draw a red source, though, Bolt kills this, because in playing around dust to dust, they have not really turned on their all that glitters in any meaningful way. Come on, untapped red source. Give it to me. No! All right, I'm not winning this game. Let's just save time. Go to the next one. Okay, that was pretty serious. Same deck going back in. Now I'm just on the play where everything's better. Okay, I will keep this. I do have a lot of artifact lands, but I have one that's not. I have the Revoke, which is the one that happens the fastest. Oops, just played the wrong land. It's all good. Mountain Go. Windscarred Crag. Synthesizer. 
flip to Galvanic Blast. That's not a very good flip. Even if they can cast it, it's it's mid. And it looks like they're not going to cast it. And it looks like I'm going to get to revoke their bridge. Revoke the bridge. I need an engine or something to carry this all the glitters. I am ahead, but this isn't going to last forever. Lembus. Yeah, they have engines while I have removal and stuff. And I think engines are favored overall. They did not bottom their scry. Kept the card. Come on now. All right, Rustville Bridge. Another Synthesizer. Flipped Standard Bearer. That card's really good. And it's going to die immediately, but it is very strong. Not a card in my list. Let's just get rid of that. Uh, any spell that could target anything has to target a Flag Bearer. That's how this works. So any burn spell has to go for this. All that glitters has to go on that. Just a big mess. Speaking of big messes, opponents got three card advantage engines in play, and I've just been hitting land drops, and they are favored here. Skyfisher gets to pick up Synthesizer, then they Synthesize, and they go again. Flip to Mountain. All right, Dad, come on. Synthesizer. I hate you so much. I'm not under that much pressure. There is time to figure this out, but the longer I wait, the more action they get. Synthesizer with three mana up. Really hard to miss on this one. Three mana and your land drop available. Dawnbringer Cleric. They did bring that in. I was just going to gain two life here. Raven Inspector. Yeah, they're doing the thing. My kingdom for a Raven Inspector of my own. Ginger Brute. Well, they have red mana up. This is a huge beating. Uh, this is the big boss, but God, I hate that red mana that's up. I mean, this is my chance to win this game. I don't expect it to work, but yeah, I will gain three life. Disappointing, but unsurprising. And these synthesizers in play, if they run out of stuff to do with their hand, they can spend two in a red to make a two, two and sacrifice this, which also flips a card. They just have another four power and another two card draw sitting in play. All that glitter as well. I've got counterplay for this also. Come on, deck. Skyfisher. Not really what I want, but I will play it. I'm going to pick up my Crag because it gains a life. Really wish that drew two cards, but doing what I can. This is the watching paint dry phase of the mirror match. They got another blast. Ancient Den. Poor Skyfisher. Interesting they made their land drop when they could still synthesize this turn. Yeah, they just flipped a den that they can't play because they made their land drop before that. Just a little sequencing error in this deck. And Lightning Bolt. They can cast that one. But 18. Yeah, unsurprisingly, the difference between make a 2-3, draw two cards, and make a 2-3, gain one life, is a big deal. Uh, I'm going to dust their synthesizers before they could start cashing them out. This will flip two cards. They don't even have red up. I don't even think there's white instance in this deck. Flipped a bridge and an all that glitters. Okay, that's a glitters I don't have to worry about. That's two down. I go to 10 here. I'm dead in two hits. Got to figure it out. Oh my goodness. Are we going to get to play the game? Come on now. Hit a synthesizer with this. Keep the chain going. Flint Hawk. Kaka. Now we're doing it. Draw another card. All that glitters. Oh, baby. Uh, well, if you have a burn spell, it's going to be good. And if you don't, I have a 9-9. Nine -nine. Nice. All right. Well, I have a giant creature. If they have Journey to Nowhere, I just got blown out. Yeah, if, that's fine. There's way more burn spells than there are Journey to Nowheres, and I think that was worth the risk. And now I'm done on board. Got to fully stabilize and turn it around right now. Come on, Synthesizer. Dusted us. That's not it. All right. Yeah, uh, The when we were sideboarding, I put all my engines into a pile and said these are uncuttable, and that's why. I was ahead of my opponent for the whole early game. I blasted their land on turn two, and I was up so many resources on them, but they had two synthesizers, a Lemboss, and a bunch of bounce spells, and I simply did not do any part of that, and they won, because that's the important thing, not stone raining them. On to the next round. Win your spot in the World Series of Poker main event in Las Vegas. Club GG is providing 100 exclusive packages between April 1st and June 30th for those who want to test their skills against the best. Each package includes the $10,000 main event entry fee plus $2,000 for travel. Use code BOSH for a free 7-day premium membership that includes entry to these satellite tournaments. I'm on the play in round 2. I have this mono red hand, but I do have two cantrips in it. I'm going to rock with it. And passing the turn. 
What do you got? Targets for Lightning Bolt? Wild Growth. Okay. Rustvale Bridge. That is white mana, or I could Lembus now. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Don't need another Great Furnace. And found the Ancient Den. Always trust in the cantrips. I could have mulliganed this hand because I had no white mana, but that's such a spew. Another Wild Growth. And a Utopia's Brawl. I wish I was playing actual Stone Rain in my deck. Unfortunately, not a card that there is in the format. Or, it's in the format, but it doesn't actually get played. That card is definitely a common in all printings. But suddenly, seven. All right. Uh, I imagine with their four mana, they can do something about this. But if they can't, I'm feeling good. I have seven points of burn in my hand. So if they don't stabilize right now, they are actually just dead. All that glitters is dumb, by the way. This card definitely probably should not have been downshifted. Crazy gameplay patterns. This was downshifted pretty recently. You can see it's an uncommon in the printing that I'm playing. That's probably where it should have stayed. Arbor Elf, okay. That doesn't beat me. Simeon Spirit Guide, yikes. Wanvuli Acid Moss. That might beat me. Uh so no, no, I'm I need an untapped land, actually. Hmm, okay. I think I'm just gonna go for the the burn win. Make this unblockable, put them to six, and burn them out over the next two turns. Hope that's good enough. I love one Vuli Acid Moss. Casting this card makes me so happy. Destroy target land, search your deck for a forest, put it into play. Sick. Topia Sprawl. All right, they have 10 mana right now. I don't care about them getting the initiative. I don't even care about them killing my creature. I would care about them gaining a ton of life. Thermo Karst. Well, I'll Gal Blast them in response. They go to two off that. My land's not a snow land, so they don't gain a life there. If they have, like, Weather the Storm in the main deck, that would be pretty annoying. Okay, cool. We just got another cheese win off all the glitters. Yeah, that's a gear of this deck that did not exist last time I tried Borosynth. Just being able to suddenly surprise Haste 9-9. Nine -Nine. Stupid. Okay, we're playing against, I believe, what people call these days Ponza. It is a uh, Gruul land destruction ramp. Okay, exiling a creature. Exile any enchantment, destroy an enchantment. Those all seem relevant. My deck seems generally just extremely well equipped for this matchup. I don't even know if I need this. Or well, they're probably gonna try to get the initiative with the big dragon guy. The green one, five drop dragon that makes the initiative. I'm not sure how this deck actually wins right now. But I like applying pressure and burning them out. And maybe I don't need the cleric. I'll just bring in these two answers to a bigger creature and leave my deck mostly the same. I'm going to keep this indestructible lands pretty good against what they're doing. Arbor Elf. That's their best start in their deck. Indestructible Bridge. d Glamour is legal in this format. That is a green disenchant that shuffles it into your deck rather than destroys it. Three Arbor Elves. I didn't bring in my uh, my Goblin. A Krar Clan Shaman. Second Artifact deal one to all creatures without flying. I don't think it's right for this matchup, but it would certainly be sick here. Okay, I can play a Thraben Inspector and have a Galvanic Blast up. I can play a Synthesizer, see what happens. I could Core Skyfisher pick up my Ancient Den, and then there's no targets for a Stone Rain. I feel like I want a Flying Creature in here in case they get the initiative next turn. Yeah, I might be outsmarting myself, but I'm into score Core Skyfisher right now. Pick up the Ancient Den and pass. They are not short on mana to do stuff. They just moved into combat and passed the turn, did not play any cards. Fascinating. I'm going to go for... Or, let's see. So I could Galv Blast and Thraben Inspector here. They missed a land drop and didn't play a card. I'm going to attack with Skyfisher. And then play Thraben Inspector and I'll Galvanic Blast one of these elves. Or Lightning Bolt's probably better. Blast will be bigger later. And three's enough to kill this thing. If they didn't do anything with five mana last turn, let's try to leave them with four mana this turn. They're back up to five. Gorilla Shaman. Okay. That kills my clue and my Ancient Den for one mana each. That card's really good. I do have an answer to it. They also have their whole board bricked right now with my creatures. Kachow. The hits keep coming. Now, kind of a real question is, do I care about Gorilla Shaman versus picking off Arbor Elf? I'm going to attack with both creatures, and if they double block, I'm taking the combat trick on Galvanic Blast. 
They didn't fall for it. I'm going to blast an elf. I'm going to risk it for the biscuit here. I don't have anything that Gorilla Shaman can destroy. And the things that I would play from my hand cost five for them to kill. And I'm pushing damage. This might turn around and just kill me later, but I'm willing to take that chance. Cycling Generous Ent. Got a forest. And there's a Thermokarst. Did not gain any life. Synthesizer. Come on, let's flip a land. Keep it going. Yeah. Flip the land that's harder to kill. Okay. Nickel and dime magic here. Cast into the fire. Get wrecked me. And the same thing is happening here as happened in that mirror match last round where they are beating up my mana, but I'm applying pressure. I'm on board. Like, it's okay. Not even a huge deal. I'm going to synthesize, see if I can spike a land somewhere else, but I'm happy to have this Rustvale Bridge. All that glitter is disappointing. That's going to burn off. They could destroy a synthesizer in the end step. They do have three mana up and might as well start taking them out. Yep, there it goes. Flip the core sky fisher. Utopia sprawl. One card left in hand over there. It better be good. We're about to find out. Or they're just going to kill my synthesizer. All right. Synthesizer's gone. Flipped another synthesizer. And the beats continue. And Gorilla Sham, the last card in their hand. It might be time to uh, glitter up here. Plains glitter is good for plus two. And we're going to get this done pretty quick. They have one draw step to rule them all. In we go. Put you two dead on board. I think they were actually supposed to jump block Thraven Inspector. That way they get another turn versus the Skyfisher. Uh-oh, this is a big mana thing. Oh, boarding party. Well, did they hit Simeon Spirit Guide? Okay, we don't lose to this. Cool. Yeah, I mean, they killed a bunch of my permanents and got a ton of card advantage off these apes, but that's just not what the game was about. On to the next one. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including Legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations so you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks, and groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. I'm on the draw in round three. Got a one lander, but it's got a lot of one drops in it. I'm going to keep it. Basically, like, drawing a land is the nuts, and not drawing a land is disappointing. But I will play the game for a while. And as soon as I find land number two, the hand pops. Playing against some blue deck, Lorien Revealed, Basic Island. It's like, is it Scred? I'm way more on the is it Scred side of Popper normally, and I don't really like this matchup from that side. I'm never really excited to see this on the other side when I'm the blue deck. Come on, land, don't punish. All right, punished. but. I deserve it. I'm going to play Inspector and get in for one. Roughly one in every three cards in my deck is a land right now, and I've just drawn two. Though hopefully next turn we get one. Obviously it's all random, but that is the expectation that I would have land three by my third draw. Or land two by my third draw. And there it is. Okay. Math. I'm going to fire the Ginger Brute into whatever this counter spell is, and whatever. They're going to have it eventually, and I'm working on low resources, so if they decide not to counter this, I have damage on board. And if they decide to counter it, that's a counter they don't have on a turn where I wasn't doing anything else. Yeah, actual counter spell spin on that. That's nuts. And we're online with land number two. Let's go. Great choice of counter spell art from my opponent. The original alpha art. Okay, I am not going to shove all that glitters into all this open mana. I'm going to attack. And I'm going to play a Batter Fist. This adds to the board and is kind of resilient to removal. Spell Pierce, okay. You got me. End step Brainstorm. They could be setting up a Talarian Terror here. Their graveyard's getting kind of stacked. No shuffle on that. Just redrawn one of the cards they just saw. It's a lot harder to shuffle your deck in Ponder or in uh, Popper than it is in Legacy with a Brainstorm. Yep, there's the terror. Oh, multiple terrors. Yeah, we're going to die pretty quick here. A oh, planes. What does that do? I can play Core Sky Fisher and pick up Thraven Inspector and replay Thraven Inspector. 
and then try to all that glitters burn you out next turn. Hate all this open mana. Their deck's full of red removal and blue counters. Armoring Mystic. That card's unbeatable. If they have a spell. If they don't have a spell, we might get in here, though. All that glitters on that boy. Don't have it. Don't you do it. Oh, the nuts. All right. Yeah, we're dead. Okay. Yeah, the one lander was not ideal. Pyroblast comes in. All of them. Relic of Progenus, we probably want because it makes Slayer and Terror harder to cast. Journey to Nowhere actually removes their creatures. I think that all that glitters is actually a huge liability in this matchup. They have so many ways to punish it. I'd rather just grind them out, I think. Lightning Bolt basically only goes face here. Oh, makeshift Munitions seems pretty good here. I've lost to this card as a blue deck many times. It just resolves and eventually you die. Okay, I'm going to try it like this. Look at all these lands. Keep. What a treat. Just going to try to curve out here with the spells that I have. Opponent mold is 6. Yeah, I guess like right now on the play is where I would want all that glitters in this matchup. I could resolve makeshift munitions while I know it's safe, or I could add a creature to the board. I'm going to add the creature. And pick up the Inspector. They're just chilling with mana open. Attack. Inspector. I'm not going to Red Blast if they fight over this. This is just such a low impact spell. I'm pretty happy with that trade. Brainstorm happens. And they do have the Shuffle with Lorien revealed. Full value Brainstorm. They search for a island and then played a mountain. That's information that I have now. I'm going to Galve Blast their face. I have open mana here, and I would like their life total to be zero eventually. Attack with my creatures. Lightning Bolt, you got me. Lint Hawk. My intention here is to pick up the Ancient Den. Brainstorm in response, okay. That's in. I would like to pick up an artifact. And I could play Wedding Invitation, or I could crack a clue. Cracking a clue also draws a card, but it leaves up Red Blast, so I'm going to go with that. Lightning Bolt, you got me. Hope I can Red Blast a Murmuring Mystic this turn. Though I might just journey to nowhere if Murmuring Mystic is their play. Because that would tap them out to do it. Starting to draw cards. These Inspectors finally inspecting. Ooh, casting my thing into the fire. Don't have White Man anymore. Did hit a land drop. Playing the Witting Invitation does get me back up to Metalcraft. It does tap me out of Red Blast. I think it's their job to do something here. They're dying, I'm not. Red Blast. They have mana up, so I am interested in Red Blasting this. No, also I don't have white sources anymore, so extra incentive to do that. Lent Hawk. All right, Wedding Invitation. Please draw an Ancient Den. Synthesizer. Maybe next turn. If they unload on me with Terrors... They got two cards left in hand. If they are a bunch of ter Tolarian Terrors, we're probably in trouble. But the burn line is still there. If this Inspector attack gets through, Galve Blast will have them at six. And then I'll have four Bolt effects left in the deck because I boarded out two actual Lightning Bolts. Or three, shit. So there will only be three left. Augur of Bolas, okay. Lorien Revealed. That's big next turn. Doesn't matter now. If they got Lorien Revealed and one Mystery card in the hand, Ginger Brute's nice. That's damage. I'm going to go for Synthesizer. See if this is worth drawing out a removal spell or a counter spell for. We're in. Flip something I can do. White land. Even if it's tapped, I'm not going to be picky. Yeah, untapped white land. Even better. Makeshift Munitions is pretty close to lethal here. How do I want to handle this? I think I want to play Glint Hawk. And I'm going to pick up the... I could pick up the Synthesizer or the Ancient Den. I'm going to go with Synthesizer. This could flip a card I could cast, like Galvanic Blast. Literally the best card I could find there. Okay, so they are dead on board. I have two Flying and four Burn in my hand. Well, not on board, but they're dead to the cards that I know I have. If they Lorien Revealed here, then they'll have one mana left to play with. Interesting. Okay. Draw. And just start by attacking. They had Lorien revealed and didn't play it. Breath weapon, two damage to all non-flyers. Okay. This kills all my creatures. And nothing to be done about it. All right, makeshift munitions. We've been sitting on it for a while. If this resolves, I think we win this game. Cool, we're in. And I'm just going to put them to two right now. I'm pretty sure they don't have a counterspell. Okay. 
They are once again dead on board. They also don't know about Ginger Brute, which is another surprise point of damage. Lorian revealed, this has to find Blue Blast to kill my munitions. Cool, we did it. Danced around that one for a very long time, found a good spot to resolve it. The burn him out endgame was pretty important, actually. Ginger Brute's a lot worse without all the glitters in the deck. Okay, I'm going to do it like this. One more lightning bolt than last time. Oh no, the one lander full of good cards. We've seen the cast into the fire in their deck. Oh, this is so shitty. Any one of these cards are random for a land, and I'm snapping it off. I'm going to mulligan this. I've learned. I'll keep this one and put the Raven Inspector away. I would have kept that other hand if it was Windscarred Crag instead of the artifact as well. Mountain Go. I assume they have Lorien revealed because this deck rarely wants to lead on Mountain this early. Yeah, there it goes. And they got a basic island. There it is. And Ponder. Great card. Good choice. I think I'm just going to play Synthesizer. Any land or one drop is a good hit here. Land, we're in. Cool. I had lands, but spiking the card there on a turn where I didn't really want to play uh, Skyfisher is perfect. Ooh, the second Synthesizer is interesting. I'm going to lead on this. Now I can play any card in my deck. There's nothing that costs more than two. Flip is another land. That's fine. I'm not going to play Skyfisher yet. We're playing the control game. Abrading my land. You got me. That's fine. I am back a resource, but also they're down a card, and that land came off of a card. Like, I'm back on mana, but up a card on that exchange, and depending on how long the game goes, we'll see which of those is more important. Casting me into the fire, too. All right. Sure. Okay. I mean, same thing, though. Those were two exchanges where both of those cards came off of another card that's still in play and is going to do more. They're up two mana. If the game goes long enough that I just hit my land drops and get out of the screw, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to Red Blast the Brainstorm. Red Blast is saved for Tolarian Terrors and Murmuring Mystics. Augur of Bolas. Not fighting over that. This does clear the Brainstorm cards. And found another Brainstorm. Okay, I've got a Glint Hawk. That's a nice one that leaves up two mana, which is the magic number to play any card I flip here. Hawk Trigger. Pick up a Synthesizer. Flipped a Barbed 3-1 creature. Battle Fist. Just gonna play it. Play whatever. These are free cards. Here they come. Suddenly five power in play. They can resolve a creature here. I can fight over it once it's in play. I can pay the ward on a Telerian Terror. Certainly worried about it though. Especially if they play two of them. And it's turn six and they're still at 20 life. Unlike last game where they were steadily losing life to my beats here and there. And then I was able to burn them out at the end. Breath Weapon. My creatures have been breathed on, and they did not follow up anything with that. I'm going to play a Skyfisher and pick up Synthesizer. Counterspell on that. That's fine. I have more of those. Skyfisher. I'm not going to pick up Synthesizer anymore. I'm going to pick up Batterfist. There's nothing I can do with the Synthesizer after having made my land drop. Augur of Bolas. Looks at the bottom three cards of their deck. Just whiffed on that. Lightning Bolt. You got it. They got two cards left over there. I still have my Red Blast that I've been sitting on forever. And I have more synthesizing to do. Synth hits the Batter Fist. This does tap me out of red, but I think that's fine. Let's cast the spell that's in front of me. These things trade with an Augur of Ballas. I'm pretty happy with that. Take the pressure off. Here they come. Block. 18 to 20. It's turn 8. And my card event is starting to take over. I've caught up on lands with them. See, we both have five lands. But I have five cards in my hand to their three. This is what I was talking about. This is exactly the two cards that they spent on cards that flipped cards are the two cards I'm up on them earlier. Long game magic. I could Wedding Invitation plus Batter Fist. Or I could Sack a Synthesizer. I'm going to invite myself to a wedding. Never going to complain about having more options. All right, a Sky Fisher is nice. I think I'm going to deal with that next turn and just get another batter fist in with the red blast up. So what I don't want to happen right now is they drop some giant creature that I can't beat. Cycling Ash Barons, two cards left in the hand. Well, two non-lands, two potential non-lands. Lorian revealed. 
But I think this is worth a red blast. I've been talking a lot about how I'm up on cards from them, from the game we've been playing. And now I'm just going to race. My three to their one, and I'm a burn deck. Let's go. I'm not blocking. Attack for three. Skyfisher. Picking up the batter fist versus the synthesizer is interesting here, but I'm going to go with synthesizer. I'm just a, a salute for raw cards. Pick up another synthesizer. Flip the mountain. Now I can play another synthesizer. Lightning Bolt goes face. I don't give a shit about Augur Bolas. This is the game plan now. Scredding my creature. That's fine. Galv Blast your face while you're tapped out. Okay. Uh, Galv Blast was my answer to Murmuring Mystic, but with two cards in their hand. They can't make many birds even if they play it. Kind of like just shoving towards the, the end game here. Synthesizer flips a Rust Veil Bridge. Equip this Batter Fist to Flint Hawk. Target creature can't be blocked this turn. How about this? I've invited myself to your wedding. This is lethal, by the way. Or no, I used the Galp Blast. <laughs> They're at one. Used a Lightning Bolt on the non-flying creature. Must mean they have another removal spell. Yeah, okay. Story checks out. Second main, I am going to invest in a creature that can attack next turn, even if it burns off. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'll Pyroblast your Augur and make a 2-2. Two -two. Having something that can apply pressure here is important to me. They're top decking. Their cards are a varying quality. The counter spells are a lot worse if I'm already on board. 3-1 Vig, draw a card. Attack with this. I still have my land drop. I'm going to go with the other synthesizer now. I am fully exposed to a breath weapon, but it is fine. It is what it is. Shit. <laughs> well, that was a good draw. Okay. Now I am uh, out of engines. If they suddenly turn the corner, I could be in trouble. Lembus. All right. Let's draw some cards. Find a Skyfisher. Pyroblast. Do I want this? Yes. All right. I'll gain a life. Okay, Pyroblast at least stops their next threat that could win the game. If they have the Monarch Pirate in their deck, that is a red card that can win the game. The Pyroblast hits Murmuring Mystic and the Tolarian Terror, like so. Fighting over it on the stack. Okay, it's gone. I wonder if I'm just supposed to be blind sacking Lembus. It gains through life, it goes into my deck somewhere, and if I draw it, it's a cantrip, versus just not being in my deck at all. Yeah, I'll sack Lembus. I have other things I can pick up if I draw a a bouncer. Or I could redraw Lembus. We're going off. Journey to Nowhere. Oh, I hate this. This does answer Telerian Terror, but I also just don't want to waste time on this. But I think I'm in the spot where I would like to keep my shields as far up as I can get them to make sure they can't turn the corner on me. Because I think I have inevitability here. And it worked last time, so results oriented thinking. I'm going to sack the Lembus again. Ancient Den. Okay. I finally whiffed. Great Furnace. The bad draws are coming now. I still have three more bounce creatures. There's five in the graveyard. I think all of my inspectors are still in the deck, all six of them. There's one. Okay, Inspector. Is this worth countering? I wouldn't blame you. Going to draw with the clue. Galv Blast is nice. Gonna make a big old beater. And I actually have lethal burn in my hand now. If they tap low or I'm not gonna I'm not gonna just fire this into counter spells. Like they need a threat if they're gonna win the game. And then when I try to answer the threat, they can fight over that. They can burn them out over the top. And I have plenty of ways to win the game in the interim. Cards like Glint Hawk drawing me a bunch of cards. I think picking up and replaying Batter Fist is better here than drawing a random card. Batter Fist back. How many breath weapons are in this deck? Okay, my my Hawk's got a fist. We're back to presenting a giant beatdown. A parade destroying the the Batter Fist. That rules because it leaves the creature behind. That's not even a good trade. You probably actually just wanted to deal three to the Rebel there. Okay, we got into my turn. I'm moving to combat. Attack with my creatures. Scred. If they go to five, another inspector, draw a card immediately, play my mountain, equip the fist. And with one card in hand, 
if it's a counter spell, it could still stop me from burning them out. They're basically checkmated here if I'm just not impatient. Like if I bolt them, then they counter Galve Blast, then they rip Breath Weapon, we might be back to stability. But if I make them answer all the shit on my terms, they can never win. Lumbus, Office Inspector, I'll keep that. Add it to the table. Draw a card. Okay, go. Now they have to answer all three of my creatures and the two cards in my hand with three cards in their hand. Okay, they got two cards in their hand currently. Just going to go for a lightning bolt over the top here. And that's enough. Cool. All right. Out controlled the is it control deck. Like I said, I don't like being on the blue side of this. This is a match if I played from that side a lot. And you need a lot of specific sideboard cards like Breath Weapon. And you still are probably in a bunch of trouble to their engines. Welcome to topdeck.gg, your community's home for everything competitive magic has to offer. If you're hosting an event, playing for a huge prize, or advertising your events to thousands of players, we've got you covered. Using intuitive pairing software, playing magic is a breeze. Players just have to sign up online, then scan the QR code in store. Give competitors the gift of perfect information as their bracket updates in real time. The self-reporting software saves you time and leaves paper match slips in the past. Leave the heavy lifting to topdeck.gg so your community can relax and focus on playing Magic. I'm on the draw in round number four. I'm going to keep this hand. It's got all my colors of mana and then a bunch of things that I'm happy to put into play. I would rather have a hand with two wedding invitations and no glint hawks than the other way around. That's for sure. Opponents on six. Looks like we got some gates in the chat. My options here are I could just get this tap land in now while it's harmless. Or I could just get Ginger Brute to work. I think I want to slow roll the Ginger Brute for a big swing turn later. Like if they just play a Sacred Cat, that's not going anywhere. Cool. Would I rather draw cards or get on board right now? I think I'd rather get on board. Start applying some pressure. Next turn, I could draw a card and bounce the invitation to the Hawk. Cycling Lorien Revealed. Getting a basic island with this Phyrexian art. Cool choice. Okay, I'm just going to swing here. Okay, Wedding Invitation. I'm going to hide my extra land in case they think this is important to counter. And Hawk out. They're tapping mana for something. Okay, counter spell. I like my sequencing there. It gave them the chance to counter the Wedding Invitation, which I care less about. They didn't take it because they played well. Oh, it's Hawk time. Here they come. Hawk versus Hawk violence. They only searched for two. I wonder if that means they already had one or... If that means they're just leaving one in for later. Okay, I have four mana this turn. If I take Barbed Batterfist off of the Rebel, they don't get a trade. Because it's a 2-2. I could also Wedding Invite to push damage, but I think I'd rather hold on to my permanence in play for considerations of drawing all the glitters. I'm going to Limbus first. Okay, I can... Not double spell, because all my cards are white. I'm going to bottom the Thraven Inspector. And then Lint Hawk, pick up Lempus, and equip the Fist over to Glint Hawk, and then get an attack where I have all the advantage. I could have been more aggressive there, just like pick up and replay the Batter Fist plus Ginger Brute. But I don't think aggression is where I'm at right now. I don't have a bunch of burn to close the game out with. Okay, they have Basilisk Gate. That activates only as a sorcery. Four mana up when I know they had spells to play. Suspicious. I'm going to start with Lembus. Rustvale Bridge to the bottom. Don't need more of those. Another Hawk. Cool. I'll play this Hawk. I'm going to pick up the Batter Fist. Give myself good combats again. Prismatic Strands. They can pick one color. I do have two different colors of things happening. And they take two from the Glint Hawk. And then Barbed Batterfist comes back down here. I like the attacker more than drawing a random card. We're just slowly tick-tocking our way up here. Modern Age. A little looting. Looted away another Prismatic Strands. Taking a journey to nowhere. See you later, Glint Hawk. Yep, Glint Hawk is the take. I'm going to start with Wedding Invitation, because if I can spike in all that glitters here, that is a huge hit. All right, no hit for that. Lembus. Or I could Inspector. Oh no, they've had enough. Yeah, they're just like, they're not beating this. Okay, they saw the engines online. 
Okay, we are playing against Caw Gates. Our clan shaman seems pretty good here. Their deck's full of X1s. Uh, but a lot of them fly. Maybe this isn't that good. Makeshift Munition seems great. Journey to Nowhere is fine. They do use their graveyard at least a little bit with the prismatic strands. I don't know if I care that much about it, though. This seems like another matchup where I'm mostly just pre-boarded for it. Oh, they have the Sacred Cats as well. The Sacred Cats, they actually use their graveyard quite a bit. I think Ginger Brute and... I'm going to shave some of the All That Glitters. Same reason as I did against Is It. While this card is insane if you get to swing with it, it's also just one of the opportunities they have to two for one you when your deck is full of two for ones in your favor. Yeah, the Batter Fist was actually sick there. Great matchup for that. And I think I'm going to cut a Novice Inspector. Destroy Evil does hit anything that they target with the gate activation. But I have a deck full of removal. I'm just going in. Pretty good opening start. I got put-ins and pickups. Those are the two things in the deck. Through one of the all that glitters I left in. We'll keep an eye on that one. Preordain. Okay, I'm not getting my existence revoked. That's good news. Top top their preordain. And played a Citadel Gate. I'm going to put Batter Fist in here. Because this is the one that hurts them and makes them respond on their own turn. If I just spend this turn drawing a card or whatever, they can hold up counter magic. And this gets a lot harder for me. But they can't just take three forever. In for three. I drew another one of these. That's cool. Keep the party going. Yep, there's the counter spell. Unfortunately, my land came in tapped, so I couldn't double spell through the counter. I think with how much action is in my hand, it doesn't make sense to sandbag and try to just burn off their counter spell mana. Like, if I only had two spells and three lands, I don't think I would have cast the Battle Fist that turn. Squadron Hawk, here we go. They have Jeskai mana up, blue, blue, or one white, one red. Okay, I'm going to play Glint Hawk first. Do the same thing I did last game, where now I make this combat not a trade. Attack. Okay, we're getting a block. I love a chump block. Put it in the graveyard. And I'll replay the fist. If they have another counter spell, it's fine. we got to get through them somewhere. Cool, just resolved. Azorius Guildgate. Three Hawks, four mystery cards in hand. Brainstorm. Okay, this is going to be a huge value. They can put back two of these Hawks, cast a Hawk, get the two Hawks, and the Brainstorm is basically Ancestral Recall. Powerful stuff. They'll probably only tutor one Hawk here, though, so they don't have to go to discard. And I imagine there's still one more in the deck. Okay. I think I just want to Sky Fisher. Pick up the Batter Fist. I'm not casting this All That Glitters into Lightning Bolt. Refuse. You can't make me do it. They'll eventually have to tap out to stop this because off of three cards here, I have five creatures in play. And my hand is cantrip, cantrip, GG button. If they do stabilize here. Okay, they didn't do anything with all that mana. I'm going to start with Lembus. I'm not going to do too much pre combat here. Don't need Rustvale Bridge. Limhawk's cool. Here comes the squad. They can prevent some of this damage if they uh, strands for red. Breath Weapon, sure. Okay. That was another thing they could do. Still taking two from the Core Sky Fisher. Played around that. Then Glint Hawk. Yeah, that's worth a counter spell. This is interesting. I could resolve the Wedding in or the Glitter right now, second main. That sounds bad, though. Yeah. I'm just going to play Three Minutes Specter and equip it. My threats are all white now, which means that Prismatic Strands holds a lot of wasted time against me. Don't bring your Cleric. Just gains two life. No enchantments in play. I saw to that. Hawk. It's the one we knew about. One more in there. Okay. I'm going to start with a wedding invitation. Double Galv Blast. I could make Thraven Inspector unblockable, put them to nine. Yeah, plus X plus X is not lifelink. That's a huge investment, though, if they do actually have strands. But I kind of like making them have strands. All right, Three Minute Spectre can't be blocked. We're in the push damage zone now. In for four. They've played three Squadron Hawks this game, and they've all chump blocked a Core Sky Fisher. You take those exchanges. I'm going to sack my clue here. I don't think I'm going to need to double Galv Blast on their turn. Ooh, that's a good one for next turn. So they can blast me pretty hard with this Dawnbringer Cleric if they want to invest all of their mana into doing that. They could 17 me right now. Guardian of the Guild Pack. That card's tough to beat. 
Three cards left, one of them Squadron Hawk. There it is. Two cards left. I'm going to end step blast the Squadron Hawk. Or would I rather go face? I'm going to go after the Hawk. If they tap out or do anything here, all that glitters gets it done. Nice. Dispel. One card left. A Synthesizer. Let's hit some goodos. Uh, that one's not good enough. Ancient Den. Galve Blast, the Hawk. Been sitting on this for the entire game. In for your life total? Question mark. Did we do it? Heck yeah. Just patience. Wait until they tap out, and then you can kill them. I'm glad I didn't draw two or three of those. Boarding out a couple of them felt right, and then you just have the button when the coast is clear. Nice. On to the final round. The NYSE Open is a prestigious, long-running vintage tournament based out of New York City. It's returning again this summer, June 22, 2024, in Plainview, New York. This 15 proxy event has a $500 entry. That's a lot of money, but what are we playing for? First place gets a Black Lotus. Second through eighth place get Time Twister, Time Walk, and all five Moxin. At 115 players, a playset of Bizarre Baghdad is added to the prize pool. At 135, four Mistress Workshops. At 155, four Foil Gaia's Cradle. This prize pool is better than Eternal Weekend. If you think it's worth playing for, sign up for the event on Melee.gg or use the link in the video description, and I will definitely see you there. On the draw for the final round, I am going to keep my hand, positive records locked, playing for the bread and butter 4-1. A swamp. We haven't seen one of those yet. We're going to get bridge in, invest in the future. Cycled a troll for another swamp. And all that glitter is pretty good eventually. I could get the batter fist in and start attacking. Yeah, I like that. Black removal is really good in Popper, and a lot of it is edicts. So just having more creatures around to suck up edicts. Feels good to me. Yeah, there's a Tithing Blade. You did it. And now I get the Synthesizer in a spot where I can play any card that's flipped. Except all the Glitters, because I don't have a creature. All right, Novice. Get in there. Land. Equip. Bang. Okay, here we go. Deadly Dispute, sacking their Tithing Blade. And a tap Land. They still have a Treasure up if they want to remove my creature. Seems they either do not want to or don't care. Both of which are fair answers. I could just send it on the All the Glitters. Snuff Out is in this format. I'm not going to send it on All the Glitters. Though it is really hard to play around Snuff Out forever. Would I rather flip off Synthesizer or reset the the Battle, battle Fist? I think I'd rather Battle Fist again. I'm just going to attack for two. And then Hawk, pick up Fist, replay Fist, play my top land. Just keep these creatures coming. I want Edicts to be unplayable. And I got plenty more in the tank if they do have a Sweeper or multiple removal spells. Drown in Sorrow. Bummer. Alright, they do have a Sweeper. And they scry their card to the top. Like I said, not worried about it. Glint Hawk, pick up Synthesizer, and off we go. Synthesizer hit all that glitters. Wow, all right, that's good. I'm going to play the Synthesizer back out first. Spike the land, easy game. Well, I mean, this is kind of free money, because it's going to burn off anyway. And if they do have a removal spell, they got me. But, uh, like, I would not have cast this on purpose. Spinning Darkness, hell yeah. Exile the top three cards of your graveyard, or top three black cards from your graveyard rather than play this mana cost. Deals through to any creature, or not black creature, you gain through life. Yep. Free interaction between that and Snuff Out. Plentiful in this format. But that was a free roll, like I said. We at least flushed out the card. But they did manage to get us to pass the turn without a creature in play, which is not where I want to be. Thorn of the Black Rose, and that's why. Now I am under... The monarchy and they've revealed that they are in fact Golgari Gardens. I'd love a ginger brute right now. It's probably my best hit. I could just draw cards with my Lembus and Wedding Invitation, or I could pop Synthesizer. I think I'm gonna start with Lembus. I will put that land on the top. Because I can double spell here. Uh I want to have a creature in play when I pass the turn. Maybe I should have synthesized first. This might have been a, a misstep. I'm still, I'm going to synth now without playing my land dropping because they hit a land. Ooh, hit a, not only a non-land, but a castable off of the thing that I have non-land. And I'm going to pick up the batter fist. Okay, suddenly two creatures again up against their monarchy. 
That was a really good hit. Not going to complain. Fanatical offering, sack a creature, or artifact, draw two cards, make a map. Those things happen. I think Blade is going to eat my samurai token. Leave the flyer back. Colony Garden. Okay, if I can get the monarchy, that's great. If not, we'll just keep trying. Snuff out and spinning darkness, both live here. Just gonna attack first. No reason to invest anything if my creature's just gonna die. I want the information before I start making decisions. And I am the monarch. That just happened. Okay, batter fist, get in. That's a blocker. Lembus. Find me some more interaction. Skyfisher. I don't think I've made a land drop yet this turn. I have not. Okay, I will keep this card. And I'm going to Skyfish, pick up Mountain, and replay Mountain. And now I have a removal spell up as well. Okay, I've taken the Monarchy from Golgari Gardens. We'll see if that's any good. I will trade off this Rebel token so fast. Their own Lembas. Everyone likes bread in this game. Bread is so good. And we are going to my turn. Nice. We still don't have a creature in play. Invitation. Lightning Bolt. I like that. Another Invitation. Synthesizer. I'll do that next turn. I'm just going to play my tap land, attack for four, and leave up my bolts. Monarchy pays out. Something's happening in the end step. They're deadly disputing something. Drawn some cards. Sack their Tithing Blade to that. And it's happening again. Sack their map token. Made another map token. Okay. I'm ahead, but they have 10 cards in their hand. That's a lot of cards. Mapped onto the plant, actually hit a Witch's Cottage, did not put a plus one counter on the plant, which is great. I didn't want to have to bolt that, but I had it if I needed it. Tithing Blade. Okay. That's going to eat the Glint Hawk. That card's really good. One of a more recent addition to Pauper. Crazy good. And cast down. My creatures are all dead now. I'm still the Monarch. They can Witch's Cottage. Thorn back to the top. Back Back to their deck, which means I need to have pressure in play when I pass next turn. Oh, okay. They did not do that, though. Didn't take that line. Played Blood Fountain instead. And I'm going to sack the Lembus in the end step. Because I can. I hope tapping out here kills me somehow. Nope, got away with it. Multiple inspectors and a synthesizer with infinite mana available. Galve Blast. I will play that before the turn is out. Novice Inspector. The Raven Inspector. Sack a Clue. I have a lot of those. Another Lightning Bolt. Love that. To the Dome. Okay, they're at 11, and I have 11 points of... Or, 4, 7, 10. I have 10 points of burn in my hand. Okay, they're using their Lumbosses to gain some life. And I have a bunch of threats in play, so even if they rebuy their Thorn of the Black Rose, I can take back the Monarchy. Or at least make a, a real effort at it. Now I have 13 points of burn in my hand to their 14 life. This aspect of the deck is so fun to me. You're just a control deck that can kill them from 14. Okay, they have converted the, the Tithing Blade. At the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses one life, you gain one life. Sure. Technically a win con. End of turn, I'm going to draw a card with Clue. Another Galv Blast. Opponent is on fire. I'm going to play Mountain. Equip a... Batter Fist. All that glitters actually just wins here, because if they use a removal spell, it taps them out for this flurry of burn. Okay, there. Blood tokening in response, or they might just be dead to this if they have nothing somehow in their seven card hand. Okay, I'm going to invite Thraben Inspector to the wedding. Wow, that just. They just didn't have it. Cool. Alrighty. Golgari Gardens. Relic of Progenitus, I like. Makeshift Munitions seems worth having for the grind. Journey to Nowhere. This deck has Troll of Casa Doom and Big 5-4 Monarch Green Dragon in it. Avenging Hunter, is that what that card's called? Once again, I think all that glitters is a liability versus the deck with free interaction. I, I can't even find a spot where they're tapped out. I'm just like on the hook for whatever. Gingerbird's good at challenging the Monarch, so I'm not going to go too light on that. Good Shave of Lightning Bolt. And I like anything with power and toughness that could poke and take the monarchy. Maybe makeshift munitions isn't for this matchup. I'm going to try it like this. Let's a go. Okay, keep. 
I don't have a card draw object, but I do have a hawk and relic to attack their game plan. Or at least a dimension of their plan. They mold a five. Haunted Mire. Rustvale Bridge. Pass. There's a plant. Ooh. All right, fine. I'll play the Batterfist. I was going to talk about maybe just Galve Blasting their plant before they can sack it to one of their Deadly Dispute effects. But then I drew something better to do, so I don't have to actually think about that. I might have done it, though. Like, Galve Blast the plant, play Relic, pick her Wellspring. Them having that card makes blasting the plant pretty bad, so I'm glad that didn't happen. Just going to attack, and I'm going to pick up and redeploy. That's the wrong card. Flint Hawk, pick up the Fist, replay the Fist. I know they play a Sweeper, but this is only one actual card here. Like, the Glint Hawk is the only card. The Battle Batter Fist stays around, and it generated two of these creatures that I have. Deadly Dispute, Sacking, the Wellspring draws a million cards and sets up what looks like a Sweeper. Yep, there it goes. I'd love a Synthesizer. No love. A Relic. Poke your Graveyard. This is where they could start to turn it around. They've got five cards in hand. I'm not pressuring. If they just get the Monarch here, I'm probably losing. Exile, Target, Artifact, or Enchantment. Okay, sure. Which one would you like? Okay, the Batter Fist is gone. Hey, the best card in my deck. I'm going to cast it. Lightning Bolt. Okay. I can sack Synth here to get a creature on board. I think I'd rather guarantee the card by being patient. Annoying. All right. Exile a card. I should have Relic first because black cards in their graveyard actually matter. But so do creatures. I guess it's a, mostly a wash. Lay out the mountain and pass. Uh-oh. Whenever an artifact put it into a graveyard from battlefield, you may gain five life. This is going to have to go on a journey to nowhere. Please exit the game, at least for a while. I know you have lots of ways to come back. And I'm going to eat this clue immediately. Exile a card from your graveyard. Okay. Here we are. Way behind. They got huge monsters in the deck. Which is Cottage. I'll bust the relic here. This might have been bait, but it's at least going to happen. I don't want them to get that oof back and kill my journey to nowhere, that's for sure. Cast down a Thraven Inspector. That's a sign that the monarchy's happening, and indeed it is. Okay. Got a couple of turns here to make something really important happen. That land is not helpful. Come on, Synth. Get it done. Lembus. Lembus, find me some gas. Another creature would be great. Keep it, keep it, keep it. Put on top. Skyfisher. Pick up the Lembus. All right, suddenly two creatures in play. They're going to get at least two cards off the Monarchy in the interim. Deck's full of removal. They're attacking. Yikes. This feels like a sweeper. Crypt Rats, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Big sweeper energy. It is a sweeper that deals three to you, though. Lumbus, again. Or a Skyfisher put on top. They're going to have to rats in combat. There it goes. Three to everything. And then Skyfish, the Lembus back up. Let's go dig back in. Golf Blast. Uh, that might be a little too hopeful given my position, but 11 burn in hand is a cool place to start, especially if Crypt Rats is a sweeper they're required to use. And they just pass without a play. There's plenty of instant speed removals in this deck. But I don't have huge hopes for this, but I am going to attack. They had stone nothing in a huge six or seven card hand last game. Cast down, okay. And uh, now I am sitting in the trash versus the monarchy. It's only a matter of time till I lose this one. Oh god, weather the storm. Only good for six, but that's still like a lot considering I just kept a galvanic blast on top of my deck. Troll of Kaza Doom. I can get rid of that. Activate Lembus in the end step. Destroy target big creature. The troll's gotta go. I'm way behind on time, too. If it looks like I can't win this game, I should just concede. I have too many good draws to just scoop at this point. Oh, that's bad. Okay. That's really good. I can kill it, but it'll cost me multiple cards. Lembus is back. If this finds a synth, I'll keep playing. Bottom, the Ancient Den, Ginger Brute. Oh, can I get the Monarch? Gain haste. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. If I can get and keep the Monarchy, I will play this game out. Nope, Spinning Darkness. All right, you got me. I'll save time for game three. 
Okay, giant creatures all over the place. I think I'm going in with the same plan. Makeshift Munitions is the last card I would consider. But I think I'm good with what I got. Just try to make it happen this time. Playing first, I will keep this hand. Rustville Bridge, pass. Gonna be heavy on that F6 button this time around. There's a Glitters. Still don't like that card. I wish that was a land. Okay, they just passed. Back for three. I'm gonna Skyfish my Ancient Den. And then play Novice Inspector. This is the most things I can play. The Skyfisher survives the Sweeper. We cycled for a Swamp in the end step. Lembus, okay. Gonna get a big hit in here. I haven't actually seen a Snuff out yet. And they can't... I'm gonna go for a big swing here. Nice. Alright. I actually resolved the All the Glitters. I haven't seen a Snuff out. Maybe they don't even play it. They can't Spinning Darkness right now. If they wanna untap and cast down... This was good for what, five extra damage here. And if they don't have that, they're just going to die. There's the swamp. And deadly dispute. Wow, that's not good for them. What can they do for one black here? Freaking nothing. They're just dead. Okay. All that glitter is uh, clearly the most swingy and busted card in this deck. There's spots where it's a liability. I did board it out completely against Is It, and I boarded down to two copies versus Gardens. But if you find a spot to crack it through, cheese mode activated. This deck is awesome, though. I'm not going to pass any judgments over whether all that glitter should be banned. I know that is a conversation being had in the popper world. I don't play enough popper to be informed on that. But it was a huge swingy card in this deck. And even without this card, this deck is pretty awesome. The play patterns are really satisfying and rewarding. And they... They make you feel like you're a blue-black wizard, even though you have Lightning Bolt and Galvanic Blast in your deck. It's a lot of fun. James, thank you for having me play this. Everyone, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the Patreon, and I'll see you next time.